Creating these classes requires equipment and services that cost money. If you appreciate this education, please think about going to elithecomputerguy.com and offering a one-time or monthly recurring donation. Welcome back. As you know, I am Eli the Computer Guy, and today I'm going to be teaching you how to create a table, how to alter a table, and how to delete a table within your MySQL database server. So we have your MySQL database server all up and running. We now know how to create a database within that server, and so now we are going to be creating, altering, and deleting tables within a specific database. So it is important to understand we are dealing with a database system that the database, the database, is that is the highest level in the hierarchy and then all of your tables will reside within that database so think about it you have like one database for your company or for your uh, your software and then under that you will have a users table you will have a parts table you will have a vendors table you'll have an invoices table or a work order table and so the tables are what actually contain the records and that's generally what you're going to be interacting with uh, so basically for for the database to be worth anything you're going to need tables so that you can actually put your data somewhere so today I'm going to be showing you again how to create how to alter and how to delete tables within your MySQL database so with that let's go over to the computer so I can actually show you how to uh, create alter and delete tables within your database again I will do that whole warning warning thing we are still logging into our MySQL database server using sudo MySQL because we have not yet created user accounts as far as this track is concerned so if you have a user account created on your MySQL server that has all privileges or has the ability to do things such as create alter and delete tables then log in using your user account account. Uh, but again, if you're following along in this particular track, we have not gotten to user accounts yet, so we will not worry about it. We will be in, uh, basically uh, logging in using sudo MySQL to get into the database server. So anyways, with that, let's go over to the computer to show you how all this works. So as always, I have my Ubuntu desktop 18.04 uh, running within a, a virtual machine on my MacBook Pro. Everything that I'm showing you today can either be run in a virtual machine, it can be run on a physical box. Again, all you really need is for MySQL to be up and running. Uh, so we're going to go down here to show applications, and of course we go up to Terminal, and then we click on Terminal, and so we are now in Terminal again. Uh, now we're going to be logging in to MySQL using sudo MySQL. Again, if you uh, have a user account, uh, you do MySQL space hyphen U space user account name space hyphen P and then go in that way. But because we have not gone into user accounts for in our particular series, we are not doing that yet. One, two, three, four, five, six, obviously. And okay, we are now in, we are now in our uh, MySQL server. So with this, uh, let's, uh, let's just see what databases we have. So we're gonna do show databases databases and semicolon of course and then we're going to hit enter so currently for the databases we have our standard default databases of information mysql performance schema and sys so we are going to need a database uh, in order to be able to work with uh, so what we're going to do is going to do create a database and then we're just going to call this class db to make life simple semicolon do not forget the semicolon and then we are going to hit enter okay and now we have a uh, class db uh, if we go and do show uh, databases let me do it again again now we have the class db here and so we have a, a database to work with now that we have this database to work with uh, the first thing that we're going to do is we're actually going to go into the database think about uh, just like you're in a file structure a file hierarchy if you're going to be doing something within a folder you've actually got to go in the folder at least it's a wise idea there's other ways to do it but it's a wise idea to go into the folder so what we're going to do is we're going to use the command use so use is the command in order to get into a particular database and so we're going to say use class db and then we are going to do semicolon and we are it set now says database changed and that means we are now in the database but one thing again one of the big things to, that you have to be thinking about uh, whenever you're dealing with a database server or a Linux server or any kind of server before you start making modifications before you start making modifications you should always verify where the hell you are at are you in the database that you think you're in and so that's where you can use this command so, uh, select select data base 
and then parentheses, and then semicolon here. So what this does is this will actually show you what database you are currently in. So then we hit enter, and so basically it says the database, and so we are currently in class DB. This is incredibly important in the real world. Again, imagine you're in a web server, and imagine that, that or in like a web server, and that server is hosting 10 or 20 or 30 different WordPress sites, and you decide to go into one of the back ends, one of the databases for the WordPress site, and do some kind of modification. You have to be very careful. You don't go into the wrong database and start screwing something up. So you do you use this select uh, database, uh, parentheses, uh, semicolon, and you can see what database you are in. So past this, we can do show tables, hit a uh, semicolon again, and we hit enter, and we can see it's an empty set. There are no tables here. So let me do control L to clear the screen. I like a nice clear screen when I'm uh, doing uh, training classes. And so from here, we are now going to create a table. And creating a table is relatively easy. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna do create, and we're gonna say table. And then from here, we're gonna create a users table. So we're just gonna call the table users, and then we are going to open parentheses. Now this is one of the nice places where until you uh, type in a semicolon, the command doesn't run. So if you're gonna type in something that's rather long, uh, what you can do is you can now press enter. This goes down to the next line and it makes it a little bit easier to know what you're typing out. If you type all of this out in one single line, it can be a real pain just to, to make sure you're typing out what you think you're typing out. So by hitting the enter key this will go to the next line the next line the next line you can make sure that you're you're typing in the right stuff and go from there so anyways uh the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to uh, create a field for user ID. Because again, whether you're dealing with users, accounts, parts, vendors, whatever else, you need some kind of unique ID uh, so that the database system doesn't get confused, right? So you know at least every record at least have one component of the record that's unique. So we're gonna have the, the user ID, and then we're gonna do space, and this is going to be an int. So this is going to be an integer, right? So uh, this is where you put in the data type. It can be an integer, it can be a, a text, it can be a var char, it can be a blob, it can be a tiny int, it can be a small int, it can be a medium int, it can be all kinds of different things. Uh, we're, we're going really simple today. <laughs> we're just gonna say it's an int um, for the user ID. And then the next thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna make this auto increment. So what the auto increment does is every time a new record is created, it automatically increments up one. So the first record is one and the second record is two and the third record is three four five six seven eight nine ten uh, pretty simple there and then we're going to make this what is called a primary key you need at least one primary key in your uh, in your table and so the user id or whatever the id is it's a good one to be the primary key uh, then we're going to do a comma make sure you get that comma in there because that's going to separate out so this is this is the first um, field. This is the first column that we've created. A user ID that is going to be an integer. It is going to auto increment with every single new uh, record that's created and it is the primary key. Again, you need at least one primary key. Might as well be your user ID or your ID. Then I'm going to hit enter and again. Again, until I, until I do semicolon, it's not going to actually run uh, the SQL statement. The next thing I'm going to do is name and I want that to be uh, X. <laughs> Text. Again, don't fat finger it. Fat fingering is bad. So we're going to have a name for whoever it is. Then we're going to have an age and we're going to make that an int. So an int is a whole number. A float is a decimal point number. An int is a whole number. Uh, then we're going to do comma for that. And then we're going to go down and we're going to do bio. So we want to know, we don't want to know a little something about these users. And then we're going to make this a text. It could be a var char, it could be something else. Again, like when you deal with data types, there are so many options for data types. And so you, you figure out what's what's best for you. Um, at the end, so the final, the final, 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 um, basically column that you're creating, you do not put a comma at the end of that. You leave it as it is, and then you close a parentheses. And so basically we have here, so we're gonna create a table called users, open parentheses. The first column is gonna be user ID. It's gonna be integer, it's gonna auto increment, it's gonna be the primary key. The next column is gonna be a name and it's gonna be a text. Then you're gonna do a comma. Then age is gonna be an int, that's a whole number, comma. And then we're gonna have a little bio, biography of who this person is, and that is going to be a text, no comma. And then you go down to the next line, or that line, and parentheses. Uh, then past that, all you do is you do semicolon, and then as long as you didn't fat finger something, 
<laughs> Again, look at it. Look at it once. Look at it twice. I think it's good. Hit enter. Yay! Query OK. Zero uh, rows affected. Uh, so now we can do show tables. Semicolon again. And yay, now we have a user's table here. Now past this, there is a command basically called describe, D-E-S-C. And so this is useful for tables because you do D-E-S-C and then you do the user's table and then you do the semicolon and then you hit enter. And so now this will describe to you the, the table. So you have a user ID, uh, that's an int. Uh, no, so it, it cannot be null. So null means that there can be a, a no value in there. Like it can be empty basically, null is, is empty. So basically with this, since it's a primary key, it cannot be empty. It is a primary key uh, and it's an auto increment. Then you have name, that is text. It can be null. Uh, you can make this non-null if you want, but again, we're just being simple right here. There's no extra information. Age, int, uh, null can be null, yes. Uh, bio type text also can be null. There's no additional information here. So we have created this particular table. Now, let's say I'm sitting here. Oh, I'm sitting here like, oh crap. I forgot something. I forgot something. I need to add a new column. So in order to add a new column, you just use the alter table uh, command. So I'm going to do uh, control L here to clear the screen to make this a little easier to see. And so what we're going to do is we're going to do alter table users. Okay. So basically what this says is we're going to alter the table users, obviously, I'm going to hit enter just to bring this down to the next line. And then what we're going to do is we are going to be adding a column. So we're going to add gender. Again, if this is kind of like a user's thing, think about maybe this is for, for some kind of class environment. Uh, so you have kids running around. So you want to know what their name is, their age is, what their gender is possibly. So we're going to add a gender. And then we say what data type gender will be. So the gender type will be uh, text. Uh, then we're going to do a semicolon. So alter table users, add gender with a data type of text. Then you're going to hit enter. You see the query okay, everything looks good. So then what we can do is we're going to do describe, D-E-S-C, users, semicolon. And now look at that, we now have gender at the end. And so basically this is how you're able to um, to be able to create a table and then how you're able to add uh, columns to the table if you want it. Now, if you wanted to get rid of a column, again, all you would do is you would use the alter. So you do alter table and then you do uh, users. Uh, then what you would do is you would simply do uh, drop and then whatever column you want to get rid of. So we're going to be dropping the gender column. Uh, then all you do again is you do the semicolon then you hit enter, you see the query OK, and it all went through. Again, if I do desk uh, users, semicolon, now you will see that gender went away. But again, again, be very careful here. Be very careful. You do realize it did not ask you, do you really want to do this? Did it not, did not ask you, are you sure? <laughs> It just got rid of that particular column. So imagine if that column was important. <laughs> imagine if that column was, I don't know, the, the total prices for different invoices. Or imagine if the column was something like the sales representative for the, for the invoice. Um, you would have literally just deleted it and been like, oh, crap, it's gone. So again, let me be clear. Make sure you have backups of your database. When they say you should really have backups of your database, um, they are not joking with you. Uh, so with that, let's do a little bit of extra credit now. So you know how to create a table, you know how to uh, alter, you know how to add a column to a table, and you know how to remove a column from a table. So one of the things that I want to show you now is a little bit of how you insert uh, records into the table. Again, this is extra credit. Do not take notes. Don't worry, you're not going to be tested on this yet. Um, I just want to show you this again. So all this kind of sinks in. So I'm going to clear this uh, screen again, control L, and then I'm going to use something called the insert command. Uh, so again, don't worry about this too much. Um, I'm going to insert into uh, the table users. And so into the table users, uh, we have name, age, bio. Uh, so these are the fields, right? So basically what we're saying here, uh, again, just a little bit of extra credit, is insert into the table users. We're going to be inserting a name, we're going to be inserting an age, and we're going to be inserting as information for the bio. 
And then we're going to say values. So what are the values for name, age, bio? Uh, open parentheses. And so we're going to do Bob, uh, comma. And then we're going to do age. So again, you got to use these single parentheses for whatever reason, uh, comma. And then we are going to do bio, uh, a smart kid. Uh, close parentheses. Uh, and there, close the quotation, single quotation marks, close parentheses, and then we're going to do semicolon. And as long as I did not fat finger anything, that should go through. Okay, one row affected. Now, if you want to add a few different um, records relatively easily, one of the things you can do is you can press the up arrow key. So if you do the up arrow key, that will show the, uh, the, the command that you just put through. And so what we're going to do is you're going to say Tim. And then we're going to say his age is 11 and we're going to say Tim is a dumb kid. You're not allowed to say dumb anymore. You know, I, I actually I actually just read a, 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 a community community guidelines or whatever. And so for some conferences, you're not supposed to say the word dumb anymore. I guess I'm just not politically correct. Anyways, Tim's dumb. I don't know what to say. Uh, then I'm going to hit enter. So, OK, uh, one row affected. So we're going to go up here. And then let's say we're going to say Sue. We're also going to leave her at 11. And we're going to say a uh, funny kid. And then we're going to hit enter, one row affected. And then we're going to go up here. And then we're just going to call, say uh, Fred. And we're going to make Fred 12. And we're just going to say a another kid. Poor Fred. He's just another kid. <laughs> Because by the time people got to Fred, they just stopped caring. And then we're going to hit enter. Okay, so we have now inserted Bob, Tim, Sue, and Fred into the user's table. So now what we're going to do is we're going to do a select. Uh, basically, we're going to print out uh, the records that are in the user's table. Uh, so we're going to do select. All. Again, do not be doing notes. Don't worry. This is not going to be on the test. Uh, this will be in another class coming up. I just want to show you how this works. Uh, from users. Again, semicolon, and so there we go. So what this is, is select all. So it says select all columns from the table users. So we got the user ID. So remember how I was talking about auto increment? So it's automatically done. So Bob is user ID one, Tim is user ID two, Sue is user ID three, and Fred is user ID four. Again, the important thing here, the important thing here is we did not add the user ID in here anywhere. Uh, we didn't even reference it when we were inserting into this particular table. Uh, it was done for itself. Uh, so we got Bob, we got Tim, we got Sue, we got Fred, we have age, 12, 11, 11, 12, and we got the bio, a smart kid, a dumb kid, a funny kid, and yet another kid, poor Fred. He always comes in at the end. Um, again, you can do some interesting selects here. So if you do select, this is this is all the uh, all the columns in the table. So you could select a uh, name uh, from users and then do semicolon. And then all that does is that's just going to simply show you the name. Uh, or something that you can do is you can do select um, select let's see name age uh, from users where age equals, oh, let's say 11, and then do semicolon. And so then that shows you only Tim and only Sue, whose ages are 11. So again, uh, this is some additional stuff. We'll talk about this in more detail later, but this gives you an idea of, of basically you know how how the tables work. So you create the table, you create the columns for the table, and then and then you're able to, to insert data into the table. Past that, then all you really have to know is how to be able to delete a table, which again, be very, very, very careful if you are going to be doing that. So in order to delete a table, all we're going to do is we just do drop um, table users. Think about it twice. Think about it once. Think about it twice. Semicolon, enter, and it is gone. So now if we do show tables, semicolon, uh, there are no tables. And so that's that's basically how all this stuff works. Uh, and again, as with all these things, if you know the syntax, it's very easy. If you don't know the syntax, you're going to pull your hair out.
So there you go. Now you know how to create a database. You know how to create a table in the database. Uh, you know how to add columns to that table once it's already been created. You know how to remove columns from the, the table once it's already been created. And then you know how to delete the table itself. You also got a little bit of extra credit on how to insert records into the table and then be able to read those records from the table. But one of the important things I really want that you to take away from this particular class is to start to realize how powerful uh, using something like MySQL can be, even if you only know a little bit. Uh, remember, uh, when you're using MySQL, basically MySQL is a backend to a programming language such as you know uh, an application created with something like PHP or HTML. But if you start looking at this, if you create an application with only one table and basically you had an HTML form where it collected information uh, from your users it used PHP to then take that information and put it into your MySQL database and then you were able to run reports basically be able to print out you know where I was just showing you that select all basically imagine being able to print that out to a web page instead of this command line interface and you start to realize wow like even if you just create a little application with one single a MySQL table, uh, that might actually be pretty powerful and pretty useful for what you're doing. And so that's one of the things that makes MySQL very interesting is once you start being able to deal with databases and you realize, wow, I can put all of these records into a database. I can then do searches. I can do queries uh, for those records. Again, to find, uh, to find all the users or all the students that are a certain age or to find all the students that are a certain gender or something else. Uh, this is where you really start to see where the power is uh, with these little databases. Again, even something as simple as what we've created today. So with that, uh, as always, I enjoy doing this video and look forward to seeing you the next one. Apparently, the type of content you just saw is not what Susan W. wants for the future of YouTube. This means that recommendations by YouTube to this channel have dropped massively and views are becoming comically small. I hate to ask. I used to say I would never ask, but... If you could subscribe, like, comment, and most importantly, share the videos that you appreciate, that may help slow the death of this channel. Do remember that if anything at all happens to this channel, you can go to elithecomputerguy.com to view the content and access information not available on YouTube.